Okay, yeah. recording. Um, so, Mika, did that recording go ahead and get started? Give me a thumbs up. It should. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Kelly, and I am a member of the Student Information Support Team, um, specialized with Infinite Campus and certified. And in this session, we're going to talk about confluence. I'm sure um, many of you have heard that buzzword, confluence, that app kind of thrown around over the last few years. What is it? What do we use it for? Is it, what's this tool? Um, so this session, um, we are going to talk about what confluence is and how we use it as our team um, here on the Infinite Campus Support Team. I have with me today, Mika Berenger. Mika, I'm sure all of us in the room have um, interacted with Mika at one point or another. I know she and I have been together for several years. So, um, we have uh, been, she's given me the opportunity to kind of lead up the session to, to talk to y'all. I don't get to do that as often as I used to, so I'm really glad to be here this afternoon. So let's go ahead and get started. For those of you that are joining us, um, go ahead and make sure you have your microphone muted. Um, just reduce that background noise so that we can uh, everybody can take advantage of the information that is being provided this session is also going to be recorded which we have already turned on so um, those recordings will become available will be available to you as soon as we get those out so we'll go ahead and get started so confluence and i'm using jason's powerpoint everyone so i'm going to just kind of make sure i understand so he opened with this this quote from Andrew Carnegie, the only replaceable capital an organization possesses is the knowledge of its people. And the productivity of that capital depends on how you share their competence with the with those who use it. Just wanted to read that quick, quick quote from Jason. Let me put in here. And again, that just means the people and the information that you that you have are a irreplaceable capital to our business. So how we communicate um, in that process. How do we do that? We have email, we have phones, we have presentations, we have Zoom meetings now. We have all these different, what I like to call channels of getting information from people and to people that need it. So what this session here is to go over confluence. What is that? And what are the challenges of all those different, um, different types of communications? You know, um, an email only goes to certain people, you know, and it's really hard to recall well, what was in that email. How do I search and find that email? Did that information change since the, each, since the email was originally sent? Um, that paper file, that PDF that we created six months ago, is the information in that PDF still accurate? Is it still effective in what we're doing? Has things changed? If, if we, we learned anything um, during the pandemic, we know that things change. So what we're gonna show you is how confluence helps us with those frustration. So you, confluence helps us find what we need. So things are hard to find when they're in email. Um, it also helps us manage security. So the people who need to see certain things are the only people that need to see those things. We don't want things outside of that security. You're not supposed to see it. We don't want you to see it. Um, then there's always um, subject matter experts, people who are the, the pros, the experts, the people who you ask questions to. My pro is always Mika. If I have a question, she's my go-to girl. I'm gonna go find her. <laughs> she's the expert. She don't know the answer. She'll know who to talk to. So she is my person. And also some of that information as we collect it um, becomes that one person is the only person that knows that information. So how do we get around some of those frustrations Especially if you're a new person or someone new to a position, you need to know who to call, call who to talk to. So let's talk about how confluence, um, how we handle it, how we use it on our team. And again, we're the Infinite Campus support team. So we, we are experts in Infinite Campus. So we know that product really well. So if you have a question on Infinite Campus, you know, we're going to be able to answer that question. Um, or if not, we're going to find the person on our team that can do it. But what what, what few of us know is that we've been using, you have been using Infinite or Confluence um, for the last several years. Um, you just may not have realized that that's what you're using. So the reason we have this session for our school secretaries and our support systems in the schools is a vision, is to get a collective idea 
of the information that is out there and put it in a centralized location for everyone that needs that information. And again, this can't be driven by me as an infinite campus specialist or a data specialist. It has to be driven by the people and the stakeholders that use it. So let's level our expectations for what we're going to learn today. I'm going to present the product confluence. I'm going to show you how our team uses it. By no means, when we're done with this session, are you going to be able to jump on confluence and, and kind of start rolling? I want you to have an, a high level understanding of what confluence is and how the school teams might leverage confluence. So keep that in mind. We're not going to give you a step-by-step -step, click here, do this, click here, do that, like you've seen from us in the past. Um, so just keep that in mind that we're going to give you just a high level presentation of what confluence is and how we are using it. <laughs> and if everyone could go ahead and just mute yeah, just their microphone, we like the little singing, but <laughs> for just a quick reminder, if you could go ahead and mute for us, thank yeah. you. So that's the end of the slideshow. That's quick, that's PowerPoint, that's just our introduction. So let's talk about what Confluence actually is and that you've already been using it. So, and how, Rachel, how have we been using it? It's the Infinite Campus Dashboard. If you've been in any one of Mika's trainings, everyone, we start out with, where do you go to find help? It's the Infinite Campus Dashboard. And I, it, Mika, can you just give me a, a yes, the screen's okay. I know I have a big monitor here. I'll make sure you can see everything. If yeah, I, I can zoom see. In a little bit. Uh -huh, I can see both your okay. Infinite Campus screen and your dashboard screen. Okay, awesome. So I have two browser windows open side by side here just to kind of to point out what we're doing. When you're in Infinite Campus, we have this Infinite Campus dashboard link in under the links um, menu. So Infinite Campus dashboard. When you click on that link, it's going to open and look like the screen right here. So we're familiar, hopefully, if Mika's done and done her trainings right, we're familiar with what this dashboard has. But let's talk about why we use it. It is in Confluence. A couple of things about the way the screen looks. And the reason I opened this in a new browser is I wanted this to see as a guest. So we are looking at this as anyone from the internet is looking at this page. So our Infinite Campus dashboard is what we call anonymous access, meaning if you Google any content that's in this space, you're going to find it. And it doesn't matter if you're with Columbus City Schools or not. It's an anonymous access. It's open to the world. Um, and Confluence gives us a wiki page. If you're familiar with Wikipedia, um, it is a wiki page which is maintained by a group of people. The information is maintained by a group. And it can be modified and edited by that group of people. This particular wiki, the Infinite Campus Dashboard, is maintained by our campus support team and the student data specialists and the people who have a stake in this information getting out to you. So you, you are using Confluence when you access the Infinite Campus Dashboard. What I want to talk about are some of the ways in which we can use this dashboard more efficiently and then how you can take the information that I'm sharing and then, then start to build your own wiki. So that's the vision is to kind of give the secretaries and the office support a place um, that you guys can start building your own information. Because we all know that if you ask Rachel a question about Munis, but blank stare, not going to be able to do it. Not going to be able to answer that question. If you ask me how to create a purchase order, I have knowledge from six or seven years ago. I haven't done one in years. So we all know that as support, that Infinite Campus is not the only avenue that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So what we're what the vision is is to to give you a space that you can collect that information. So currently we're collecting the Infinite Campus information here in this space. At the top of the screen, you'll notice that I see this option here that says spaces. So Infinite Campus Dashboard is a space or a collection of pages that, re that refer to Infinite Campus. And you'll see that I have a certified dashboard. We have a community dashboard. Those are all different wikis, different spaces that collect that information. These spaces, say, for example, the community dashboard, 
is a space for our parent portal. So this is where we have information specific to the parent portal. So, and you'll see the parent, the community dashboard is also an anonymous space, meaning you don't have to have an account. You can go out there and peruse that information, look for that information and, and gather that. So information, what information? So once you're into a space, a collection of pages, those pages live down this left-hand column over here. Now for the infinite campus dashboard space, we kind of organize those into categories. And you'll notice like the 3GRG category. If I click on 3GRG overview, I'm getting instructions on how the 3GRG process works as it relates to infinite campus. So we have a page for that. So what I'm going to show you today is how these pages are created and some things that we do to collaborate with this space. So we have a page and then we have the information and you'll notice on each page they kind of have a similar feel the fonts the same the colors might be this green is the same green if i go to another page so they have a look and feel about them that we can control through the confluence environment so as i click through these pages and i can and find it so i have a question about attendance uh, let's go expand attendance. Here are the different pages or wiki pages that have information on attendance. Now, one thing that we found when we started building all of this um, information was, oh, there's a lot of information out there. So how do we find it? So when you're in the dashboard on the overview page, there's a couple different ways to search for information. Up here at the top of the page, you have this search search bar, which says search confluence so you're searching every space i'm going to put just attendance in here and show you um, that i'm looking for every space that has a, the word attendance on it and you'll notice the page like this first response first search result it says this page lives on the infinite campus dashboard but if i go down a couple more clicks this one is on the community dashboard so it's telling me what space that that lives in. And if I click on, let's say, attendance notes, click on that page. Hey, Rachel, would you mind mm -hmm. um, making the dashboard screen a little larger? People are uh, sure. trying to get a better view of that. Sure. Let me... Thank you so much. Oh, that may be a little bit too much. Is that better? OK. So when That's I click on up here in this search bar at the top, I'm searching confluence for the word attendance. I selected the attendance notes page right here. And that brought me to the page about attendance notes. Some things about this page I want you to, to kind of understand. Um, we have instructions. Uh, the only thing we need here is a title to save it. So we've given it a title. And then we have all this information about attendance notes and how they're processed. We also see the original creator who created this page. And then the last time this page was actually updated. So that's important when you're talking about collaboration and sharing information. So we all know that attendance notes might have, you know, they've changed a little bit um, during uh, the COVID experience. So is this page still current and accurate? For me as a user, I like to know, okay, well, this hasn't updated since January. So if I know something's changed in the business process, I might be a little bit more hesitant of the information, just making sure that it has anything new that's happened since January of 2021 is included in that document. So that's some things about the pages that you'll you'll get to know and the other thing you'll see here these icons these are the contributors of that page so amber amber was our original author but debbie deshano has had some input she's made some edits and mika has made some edits here as well so we know who those those experts were that wrote this documentation some other things that we can do um, here we can scroll down 
we have included a PowerPoint or a, some information, some pictures. So these are pictures and of all the different, I mean, it looks like PowerPoint screens on this particular one. So when they created this page, they included those, that, those screens in that PowerPoint. So it's one thing that we can do. So we make those, those pages and you'll, to find those pages, I use this search bar up here. Now, if I select it, I'm gonna just do this for demonstration, this attendance that says the community dashboard. This particular page, just titled attendance was created last January. It's on the community dashboard. This is attendance as it relates to the parent portal. So this is a different type of wiki. So just kind of keeping that in mind that when you use this search bar up here at the top, you're searching for all spaces. Now, what if I just wanted to find attendance information related to Infinite Campus? Over here, I'm gonna select, I'm back on the Infinite Campus dashboard. I selected spaces, went back to the dashboard. When you go to the overview page, we put in the middle of this page, a search here and it says search infinite campus dashboard. So when I put attendance notes in here, ah, if I can type, I'm only gonna get results for pages that relate to attendance notes in the dashboard. So it excludes all of those pages that are over on the community dashboard. I'm not gonna see those. And I'm gonna find that, navigate to it here. And again, I can browse or peruse the, the, the categories over here on the left and kind of just click through some of these pages. But then I can also, if I'm in a hurry and want to quickly find those pages, go back up to the overview and click on the campus dashboard search right there. Okay, so let's talk about, we've talked about the pages. Let's talk about this blog option. So we're gonna, we have not been great, but we're gonna get better about using this blog um, type of page. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this blog here. So a blog post is a quick update about the information that um, whatever you wanna talk about. So you put a blog update and we are, this was a blog update about the new contact log. If you've all been out to the new contact log, you might have noticed that it looks a little different. So this was a, a post that Jared created back in February to let us know that, hey, the contact log is getting ready to change looks. It's gonna look different the next time you come in. And Jared does an awesome job about putting the, what it used to look like and what it looks like now. So this was just a blog update um, that he put out. Now, when I think about the blog, Yep, I'm going back to the overview. And I am in a blog post. Oops, sorry, I gotta go back one. On this overview page. One thing I wanna point out is on this page, the overview page, we have this comments button. Currently, we are looking at the anonymous view, meaning anybody on the internet can um, see this information. Once we get our accounts, once we were gonna get all the secretary's accounts to Confluence, you'll be able to log in to um, Confluence. Let me go back in time and did that really quickly. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, there is a little, um, looks like a door with an arrow. That's our sign-in button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sign in. You get to this Confluence page and I'm gonna continue with Google and I'm gonna use my Columbus City Schools credentials to log in. Again, this is not something that you can do today. We do need to get a list of all the names and get everybody access to Confluence. So once you get your username and you get your access, you're gonna be able to put your email address in Click next. I'm going to tell it is a work account. It's going to ask me for my password. It's going to take just a second. And I want to show you that once you have that password, some things change a little bit about the pages. So once you're logged in, 
You'll notice up here where I hit that login button, I now see my profile picture because I put it there. Sometimes you'll see your initials. Um, you also see this notification bell that was not there before. Before, the only thing we saw was that little door. So once you get your, your login, you're going to be able to get in here. And that changes this part at the top of the page. So once you're at the top of the page, we have a few more buttons. So let's, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our test space, which we have spaces. Jason gave me access to his test space. And you'll see that when I switch spaces, the overall look of the content is pretty similar. So I have an overview space. I'm not sure why that looks like that. The blog. Then you'll see that. Um, yeah, let's, let me click on a page to see if that reads up that great. Yeah, that worked. So here's a page that Jason created in the session earlier today. Um, so I'm just loading that up so we can kind of get the feel that the pages with no matter what space you're in kind of have the same feel you still have this bar along the top the search bar um, but once you get logged in you're going to see these icons at the top let's talk about what those icons do um, this first one is edit so if i click this little pencil and edit this page it brings me into an editor and this allows me to essentially create a web page or a wiki web page with no experience creating web pages at all. So the information that I type on here is going to be turned into a web page. So let's talk about um, the, I'm going into edit mode for this particular one. Let's talk about creating one from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So what does that mean? So I'm going to come back down to the confluence for school secretaries. He's got that section here, that page. There's a little plus sign and it says create a child page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's a blank slate. I can put whatever information I want here. So I'm just gonna call this afternoon session. And that's all we really need to save it. It's just a title is it at, in or publish it. And there's a difference between the word publish and save. When you publish a page, it goes out and it's available to everybody who has access to this space. So giving it a title, and then I can just put whatever information I want. I can start here and just begin typing my content. Now, one thing that went away as soon as I started typing was our templates. So in Confluence, we have an option of some templates, and that was the one that was in that last, the weekly meeting notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this template click on it and it's going to say hey if you want to discard what you've already typed that sentence can I start here I'm going to create it it's going to reload my page but it's going to fill in a lot of the information for me and in this template we have some guiding guiding um, narrative here in this box, put a brief overview of what your meeting is going to be about. So I can just highlight over that and type over. Now I can put the information on this page. Now I'm creating a web page or a wiki page um, from scratch. Now let's talk about the editor. Um, again, in this session, we're not going to go over the details of how to do all this fancy icons and colors and and how to how to do all these tables and everything. I just want to kind of get your mind flowing with what it can do. So down here in our meeting minutes, we might be able to type um, a date. So we do three, two, and we can just fill in the meeting notes. So it kind of gives us the overview or the outline of how we want our meeting notes to look. Now, if you're working on a team and you want to see the same information from week to week on what your meeting notes should include, a template is the way to go because you're going to keep using that same template over and over again. So once we have that page started, you'll see up here at the top, I have some icons. I have my profile that tells me that I am here. 
and we're going to explore how this page can be edited by multiple people after I publish it the first time. So this page has information on it. I'm going to get it out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. So now some key things have happened. When I hit publish, it makes me the creator of this page. It gives you the information that I typed on that page. Oh, I hit, sorry, that was me. I hit the back button on the keyboard. Give it just a second to reload. Oops. Here we go. That was my mouse mistake on my mouse. I got hit the backspace button on the mouse real quick. So now that the page is published, we have that pencil to edit. Then we have these cool icons that happen with access. So once you have access to Confluence, we have our comment in line, we have our star, and we have our eyeball. But before I use these buttons, I want to share this page with Mika. So I'm going to go ahead and hit share. So what this is going to do is it allows me to put in um, Mika's name. And then I can put a quick little message. We've all uh, hopefully we've shared pages or things like this before. So I'm going to hit share. I'm going to put a little comment in there. This is the document I want you to look at. So sharing this page this way by giving it to Mika and then putting a comment here, the bell up by Mika's name when she logs into Confluence is going to have a number on it. Let me show you how that looks in just a second. I'm going to hit send so Mika can get to this document. And Mika, if you could go ahead and open it up and go into edit mode for me so we can, we can demonstrate that. So Mika just received a notification bell with a link. Here, here are my other notifications that I've received recently, but Mika has one directly from me right now that she's gonna open up. Now this first button is the pencil. I'm gonna open that pencil up and that brings me into edit mode. So while I'm in edit mode, Are you able to get to it, Mika? Okay, let me share it again. It hasn't come through just yet. Okay, let me share it one more time. Now I might have. No. I was... Oops, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> so it says share. You should have it in your bell. Okay. So it's in the test space. Ah, there, I see it. Okay. So now that Mika's received that share, she's on the, the notification bell, she should be able to pop that open up. And it's a link, so it's gonna open her up to this page. A couple of things I want you to notice up here at the top, it tells me that Rachel's in this document and Mika's in this document. And the other thing that you're gonna see is down here in the open actions area, that little purple icon, uh, Mika is typing and I'm seeing her her corrections or her entries live as she's doing that. So as she's creating that, I can see that. And then I can come down and say, I don't like this line, take this out. Oops, mess that up. Let's fix that. The screenshot. So that we can put those that information we are actually working on this document together so on mika's screen she will see a green r right here next to my cursor so she knows exactly where my cursor is in this document as i click around so we are collaborating at the same time on a document or on this wiki page so because we are in the page at the same exact time, I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. Now remember, publish is different than save. Publish means that the changes that you have made are going to be shared with whoever has access to this page. Now, once I hit publish, um, if Mika is still in that document, she's going to get a notification. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do go ahead and into edit mode. And Mika, if you could publish while I am in here, so we can get that notification. Um, yeah, see, a new, while I am working on the document, Mika says she's published a new version. 
So what that means is I want to either go out of it or refresh it or just know that the changes Mika made are now public. So you're going to get that notification um, in that document. So using a page in this way allows us to collaborate as a team on a document, even though I might be the creator or the first person who published it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the content is purely mine. It just means that my name is the first name that published it. And you'll see also on, at the top of the page, now the contributors of the, to the article are here at the top of the page. So you'll see that even though this is created by me, I'm not the owner of that con content. We are both um, contributors to that page. So it keeps track of that information for you. The other thing it keeps track of is when it was last updated. So that's really important information as you're sharing across the across um, the district. So is who wrote it and when was it last updated? That's kind of important when you're trying to get the accurate answers that we're looking for, right? So the other thing that we can do um, is comment. So say we publish this wiki page and someone looks at it and they go, well, Mika's not amazing. So I'm going to highlight the word amazing and I'm going to make a comment on it. She is terrific. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So I've highlighted the word amazing and I'm changing it to terrific and I'm going to click save. So what that does is it now highlights that text in yellow. So as a collaborator, I can go, oh, okay. I want to resolve that and say, okay, we've taken care of that comment. And those kinds of comments, inline comments are more for when you're trying to edit a document saying, okay, I wanna say it this way, not that way. So it's a back and forth conversation. So let's go ahead and put that inline comment back in. Why inline comments are, uh, are useful is because as a create, creator of the document, when anyone creates an inline document or inline comment on this document, I'm getting a notification. This is, hey, Rachel, Mika has made a change or has a comment about the content on this document. So we're able to, to work through issues or work through um, opinions on how we want that final document to look. So, and then Mika, if you could um, click on that comment and then put your reply, and then I wanna show them how that looks like when, when someone else um, creates a comment. So you'll see down here, I got a notification. Mika Bar Barringer um, commented, see their comment. And then she has an information there. So when we resolve that comment, we say, okay, we've taken care of, we've had a back and forth, we've had a conversation about how we want this sentence to look, we can resolve it. And what that does is it takes the comment away. And the comment is, it doesn't take it away, it just takes it off the screen. So we're not seeing it, it's still there's a history of it. So we can go back and go back and forth and see it if we want to, but typically at this point, once it's resolved, we're done. So those are inline comments. Another thing that we can do with a page down at the bottom, we have this write a comment box. Now this comment um, is a comment on the page. So we're making a comment on the whole of the wiki page. So we're not calling out a specific line or a specific phrase. We're commenting about the whole page. And then click save. Those comments, comments that are made to the page, live at the bottom of the page, and there is no resolve. It's just, it's a comment. Once you have your, your, your login, you'll be able to put comments on pages. Because again, we want to keep track of who made that comment and when it was made. So once you have your login and the system knows who you are, you'll be able to comment on pages. That's, a, that's another um, perk of having a confluence login. Another thing that we can do with the page, just checking the time real quick, is we can star this page. So if I click star and turn that star on, when I come over to up here at my top, my confluence um, navigation up here, under recents, I can hit starred, and you'll see that that's a page that I've starred. It's a favorite. So it just gives me a quick way to get back to that page 
after um, maybe I've moved on and gotten into a different different page. So let me, for example, go to this test page that we were working on earlier. And then say I want to go back to that afternoon session page that I just spent. I can go start and pull that up that way. I'm just gonna, I feel like I'm talking really fast. I'm gonna take a pause okay. and make sure Do you mind if out. I you mind if I jump in just a little bit? Sure, here? absolutely. Okay. And guys, I really just kind of want to give you what the vision is why we're showing you this for confluence, because honestly, our secretaries in the district do not have really a main collaboration space. You guys have things that you're doing uh, during your job day that don't necessarily always involve Infinite Campus. You've got a lot to do. So we're trying to come up with a space where you can collaborate together, where you can share information. I know some of you have some people that you call that are really knowledgeable and have a lot of information. So when something comes up, you're like, oh, I'm gonna call Miss So-and-so at Beachcroft so I can get the answer to this question. What we're trying to do is give you a space where we can put all of that information together so that anyone who does not um, have that kind of mentor relationship with another person in the building can actually go somewhere, put those questions out there. And this is a space for all of you to kind of collaborate and put it in, but it's gonna take some really buy-in from everyone. And Liz, I see you, I see uh, the Teams. Teams is also a really good source but Teams is better for that instant messaging. When we're talking about using Confluence, this is where we're gonna be able to kind of put all that information kind of like a knowledge base just to dump everything in. And then we're able to see all that information and update it, make the changes, because everyone knows our, our district changes a lot. There's a lot of movement, a lot of things that go on. So if you have that main space where we've got a blog space where Liz Dickerson can go out there and say, hey, everybody, did you know that the new PLP moved? Did anyone else see this? And this is just a good spot to get that talking back and forth and give you that help that we can't always offer you. So this is why we're showing you this space. We wanna create one for the secretaries. So this will be a spot that you can all go and get that extra little bit of help. Cause I know a lot of you guys call me for questions like, hey, Mika, I don't know what to do about this when I run into a Kronos problem. Well, Mika doesn't train Kronos. <laughs> so Mika might not know either, but we'll have somewhere to go where all of our knowledgeable people can share all at once with everyone in the district. So I just want to make sure that you kind of got why we're showing you this and what this product can really do. And so I'm sorry, Rachel, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I appreciate that. That was actually a great segue because um, we were going to start looking at blogs. And this is a particular yes. blog that we did earlier this morning. Again, it was just a, a blog with a question about using Confluence. Um, how do I know if someone else answered this question on Teams? Um, we use Teams in collaboration with Confluence. It's not one is better than the other or one does this that this one doesn't do. They, they both kind of do similar things. They both do similar um, tasks. The, the, the benefit for us as a support team is that Confluence gives us a searchable place to go back, all of us as a team to go back to, to find those answers that might have been answered previously. So when you ask a question on Teams, you ask a chat question and someone answers it, you can go up and search the chat and see if that question is there. You can do that in Teams. Some, it's, it's possible to do that there. Um, what Confluence gives us is that who created that, who asked the question, who answered the question, and when that question was, was answered. So we do use them together. I think Teams more of a communication. I asked Mika a question or I asked Region 2 a question, and this is how Region 2 does it. So really what Confluence does is it gives us a place to kind of contain that information and that, that is the place where things are stored for, like we tell you that when you've been in our sessions, if you have a question about Infinite Campus and we have documentation, it's gonna live on the Infinite Campus dashboard. We just call it the dashboard, we don't call it Confluence. You know, that's the difference. Um, so they are definitely partners in, in a tool that you guys can, that people can use to collaborate. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a space. Our nurses use, let me see if I'm the right one. I think we need to be, need to be yeah. 
So they are also big users of Confluence. And I just want to kind of show you. Kind of what because Confluence, their security wrapped around the space and the information that is in it. I'm showing you this space, but it doesn't necessarily mean that when you get Confluence, you're going to have access to the space. You will not. So we pull this up. Let's pull up masks on the bus. Someone asks a blog question. Here's the question. Here's the answer. So this is the person's question. And here's the answer. And this is real time. This just happened a couple of hours ago. Let's talk about um, you know, there. This is the way they use it. They, the question was asked. Now this question, because it's one uh, user, goes out to everybody who has access to the space. Anyone can comment. Um, what was that one that signs? It was one earlier that Jason used that I liked. And while she's looking for oh, that, there's also um, going to be uh, at the top of the screen, and, and, and I'm sure Rachel will show you that as well. There's a, uh, a button for you to watch pages. So a good mm -hmm. example of that is our attendance codes. We all know <laughs> those change. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. can actually watch that page. And then when Rachel goes out and says, hey, we've got this new attendance code, I'm putting it out there. You're getting that notification. Boom. Hey, there's an update to this page. And that will also be something good on a site for all of you as some of those procedures change that you don't always hear about. I know communication is sometimes a problem um, in the district. Not everybody gets the same information at the same time, but if we have a place to really put that so that everyone is hearing the same thing, I really think it's gonna be a benefit to all of our secretaries. Mm -hmm. So this is a blog post about the preschool form. Someone asked that. So here's, does yeah. anyone have that form? And then another user um, posted the actual form. Now, if you're out on a blog, you can turn this little eyeball button on, which is the watch. So you see this question pop up on the blog. It's not necessarily been answered yet. If I hit that watch, when it does get a comment or when someone does reply, I'm gonna get a notification through my email that says, Carolyn Bernard, she replied to this answer. Here's a link right to her for comment. So that watch button is helpful to keep track of um, the, the replies and the responses. And again, Confluence is a collaboration space and it's only going to, to be better the more people participate in it um, and use it to, to control that input, to control that flow of information. Our team has been using it for years with the Infinite Campus Dashboard. Um, and I just wanted to um, to share that we, as everything, we could always do better with blogging more, getting the information out. You know, we're always looking at ways to communicate and get that information to the right people. You all know that you know one person that put an email out and says it to do it one way, and then in two weeks you might get another email out that says to do it this way. Well, if we can take that email out of the out of the picture and have one centralized location where we post the current way that things are done, that is only going to make our communication better. It's only going to make that improve. So, so once we are in here, I think I've gone through most of the, let's go back over to the test site. So I'm going to go up here to spaces. And again, once you have a login to Confluence, you're going to have access to more of these spaces. Currently, when you're in Confluence, when you go to the dashboard and you connect the spaces, you're only gonna see the anonymous ones when you're not logged in. So I'm gonna connect to this test space and go into a page. I'm gonna expand the secretary's page, go into the afternoon session, one thing that is the last thing I want to show you that I didn't show when I was creating the page, I was going back at my notes, is when you're creating a page, you can, I don't know, just pause Jason's presentation earlier, hopefully it does not do the same for me. I am in edit mode on this page. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in, I am dragging a copy of 
the agenda for today. It is a PDF file, just drag and drop. I now have a copy of that attached and I hit publish. So the email that we received with all the links is now an attachment to my confluence page. So if I didn't get that email, or if I know a friend that didn't get the email, and I had this attachment in a centralized location, I can then just share that with that person. Send that. I love you, Jason. Send. And now Mika's getting a link to that page with all of the training links that we've been using today. So, and again, we know that um, Teams is out there, Confluence and Teams kind of work together um, in this process, but I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a second and see if there's anything I need to address in the comments. Yeah, we agree. We, our yeah, team we agree, does Ms. Use, Frankie. <laughs> we agree. Um, and especially, you know, I have experience in the school office and I know that, you know, when people come to our training classes and you're, we're here to train about infinite campus and you're asking questions about chronos and munos and all, we know we know we need to get a centralized location and everybody every team kind of disseminates and communicates that information differently and our support and our school our office support staff or secretaries are getting bombarded with all the different channels so you're seeing all those channels the emails the the team's messages, now Confluence. Um, we just want to present what Confluence does for our team and how we use it. And we would love to support um, you as you guys kind of grow into building your own network of documentation and of training information and of procedures. And you know all of that information um, lives in a centralized location and up to this point, we don't we have not seen this for for our secretaries um, we haven't seen this as an option and we'd like and as with anything um, we have to have some um, some leaders to push in and say this is what we need this is where we need to go so you know any forum um, blog posts any we need to have contributors you know like just because rachel segment. or mika is the one saying <laughs> yeah. that is we need to have good contributors. We need to have people pushing it um, to get that information out there. We can't just rely on a silo of one person, you know, because we know, we all know that when we get together and we hash out some of these details, some of the best ideas are people in the room that um, you, we already have the answer. We, we, someone here knows the answer. We just got to get it out to the, to the masses. So. And uh, I see Mackenzie, yes, there are uh, several different spaces that live in Confluence with several mm -hmm. different departments. So it'll, it'll just, um, once you get that login, you'll be able to see mm -hmm. a little bit more. And I, I also want to just throw that challenge out there. Like Rachel said, this is only going to work if we really kind of have that buy-in, if we kind of have people really kind of start that process. Um, so for any of you who are really interested in helping us get this off the ground, if you'll just get with Miss Lydia, because this is her beautiful vision. We're not going to step in there, but if you mm -hmm. want to get with her and be, you know, maybe some of her beta testers or helping, you know, kind of get this off the ground. I, I know a lot of you know how this works. You come to my trainings and you have millions of questions, and this will be a great place where we can not only help you, but help any of our new people that are coming into the district as well. So anyone who's interested or in really kind of trying to get this uh, started, if you'll just let Miss Lydia know, um, and we can get some people to kind of get started on this. Great. 